Good afternoon, and welcome to the Church of St. Patrick. Today we begin, today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Kindly make sure all cell phones are turned off before we begin, begin our liturgy this afternoon. Don't forget to return your Shamrock $10,000 chances to be eligible for the monthly drawings that begin the first Sunday, Saturday in November. The grand drawing is March 2021. Don't forget our spaghetti to go is tomorrow, Sunday, October 4th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. or sell out, whichever comes first. The price is $8 per platter. Weekly candle intentions to remember your loved ones are available in both the main church and Our Lady's Chapel. Please call the rectory office to remember someone in this very special way. Our monthly lottery calendars are also available by calling the rectory office. The blood drive sponsored by St. Patrick's Parish has been changed to Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, October 7th, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please make note of the time change and date change. Catechists are needed for our prep program starting in January. Additional details are in the bulletin. As humans, we can be possessive of our worldly goods and take credit for our talents. Yet everything we have is a gift from God. Even the work we do to earn our living is done through the energy and talents that God gave us. Like the tenants in, our, in today's gospel, we owe everything to God, our divine landlord. We remember at this Mass, Edward McCune, our presider is Monsignor O'Connor. Please stand. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, from my fault, from my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the ever virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Almighty and ever living God, who, in the abundance of your kindness, surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing with my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what he yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was done for the, those for my vineyard that I had not done? Why would I look for the crop of grapes that it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the, Lord, is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about all of these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen of me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first one. But they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death, and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. Gospel of the Lord. Lord. 
In the sacred scriptures that we meditate on on this 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear in two of those readings about vineyards. First in the book of the prophet Isaiah, in the earliest section of that book, about the vineyard. And then in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus uses the image of a vineyard to teach some things. Now you have to understand that when Jesus tells this parable, this is going to sting those people who heard him to the core of their being. Because he's speaking about the house of Israel and their rejection of God. The vineyard that he speaks about, as we just sang, we're singing in the responsorial song, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard that Jesus speaks about is us. First of all, the people of Israel, and then now us today. And what happens in that parable? The people reject the messengers of the vineyard owner who come to proclaim his will. They beat one, they killed one, they reject it. We can see that Jesus there is speaking about the prophets of the Old Testament who came to proclaim the word of God, but were rejected by a people who did not want to hear it. You know how we can be, human beings, when we don't want to hear something, we find a way not to hear it. We rationalize it, we make excuses, because it doesn't fit with what we're thinking. So Jesus takes the task, the first people to hear his proclamation of the gospel. Finally, Jesus says, the vineyard will send his own son. Him, they will listen to. No. They threw him outside the vineyard and killed him. Jesus speaking ahead to his own death, the son of God, who would come and proclaim the gospel and be rejected by those who hear it. Lest we be too harsh on our ancestors in the faith, let us take a good, honest look within ourselves to see whether or not we reject the vineyard owner as well. Do we accept the revelation, the teachings that the Lord gives us in sacred scripture and in tradition? Do we accept the ways of God, or do we too find reasons to rationalize them, to dismiss them because they don't fit with our own particular thinking, rather than saying we need to adjust our thinking to the thinking of God, to accept the proclamation of the gospel and the good news proclaimed therein. That is what it means to be a good Catholic Christian, to accept the teachings that God reveals to us in sacred scripture and in the living tradition of the church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that is truth. And although the messengers of the truth can at times be weak and imperfect, the truth itself is never compromised. It is the truth of God. And we, as members of the vineyard, of the household of God must ask ourselves if we will be like our poor and our ancestors to reject that teaching, to rationalize it, to silence the proclaimers of it, or will we be open to it in all of its teachings, in all of its truth, in all of God's revelation to us? So much of that is incumbent upon us as believers, as disciples of Jesus, as ministers of truth in our church and in our world and in our culture. Today, we can examine ourselves to see if we are really open to that or if we are really like those who many times have gone before us and rejected the proclamation of that truth. In so many ways, we must be livers of that truth. Today, on the 
the front cover of your bulletin as you leave Mass today and take it home, you will see that pro this is Respect for Life Sunday. One of the ways that we proclaim our belief in our truth of God is to respect all lives. You know, we hear a lot today about respecting lives. We should respect all lives. Every life, born and unborn, is precious in the sight of God. And we must respect and honor all people of every race in all aspects of life to be truly sons and daughters of the God who loves us without condition and completely. Today, as members of that vineyard, the House of Israel, the Church of Jesus Christ, let us proclaim the truth of that vineyard, that we are sons and daughters of the living God who live out His truth each and every day of our lives. It's always diff it's often difficult to do that, but it's possible by the grace of God that we receive, especially in the sacraments, the grace that we will receive in this Eucharist this evening to empower us to live the truth and to proclaim it always. Together now, let us profess the truths of our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, to God and through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son, the Lord is glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one, the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's merciful and abundant love, let us now lift up our prayers for ourselves and all those in need. That our Pope Francis and all the priests and deacons will imitate the Son of Man in leading the people of God to the gospel of life. Lord, in your mercy. The God of justice will guide all government leaders in carrying out their duties with wisdom and a sense of service to all. Lord, in your mercy. That all in the military who serve throughout the world and their families will be surrounded with the grace and protection of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. That Jesus, the divine healer, will bring comfort and healing to all those who have suffered in any way from the, from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that all in our faith community will have the strength to resist the temptation to discriminate against the poor, the immigrant, the elderly, and the unborn. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that the Lord will console all in our faith family with his promises and help them in any unbelief. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that those in need of healing of mind, body, or spirit, and those who have asked us to pray for them, will feel the healing comfort of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. That all who have died, especially those who have died unremembered and unborn, and the Reverend Fritz Cirillo OSA, Mary Chiplona, 
Elizabeth Corey, Ryan, Robert Ryan Miller, Rena Hudak, and Marie Hope. May they be purified of sin and welcomed into the glory of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That Edward McEwen, McEwen, who we remember at this Mass, will always share in the eternal banquet in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And for those petitions, we hold in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, hear these prayers of your faithful people, and give us the gift of faith that we may serve one another. This we ask through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity may be the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, through the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
be praised. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, 
we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. <clears throat> I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we will see. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to combat the corona pandemic. Most merciful and trying God, we come to you in our weakness, we come to you in our fear, we come to you with trust, for you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors, give understanding to scientists, endow caregivers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one. Welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our community. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God not be beginning the only way. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about.